Hey, I am back. So the new studio is working out great. Unfortunately, it's not free. So I've been working on an online class making this beautiful coffee table to help pay for some of the costs. Now the video has five hours of detailed instruction. I even have a chapter on making jigs and fixtures for the build. So there should be no reason why anyone cannot complete the project. Those of you that have bought my class, I want to thank you for your support. These lights, flooring, electrical, everything that goes into the studio costs money and I don't make enough from YouTube to pay for all this. So if you want to support my channel, go to my website, wnwoodworkingschool.com and get the online class. I put a lot of effort into it, showing you the hows and whys of every step. I think you're going to learn a lot from it besides building the table. Today, in this video, I will be talking about hand planes. Quite a few years ago, I was a demonstrator at the woodworking shows. And a lot of attendees come up to me and ask me, why are you still using hand tools where there's a lots of power tools here that can do the job faster and better? Well, that's partially true. Hand tools are finesse tools. So for like, if you want to get into the more finer part of woodworking, it can take very thin shavings here and there to finesse a drawer to get that piston fit. Or if you have a wide board that you cannot put it through your joiner or planer, well, a nice hand plane will flatten up fairly quickly. Now, there's a lots of reason why people use hand tools. Some, they feel safer with hand tools than power tools. They don't have to worry about cutting themselves. Some, because they enjoy the quietness of it. Getting into that zen mode, hearing the whisper shavings coming off the, the hand planes. Now, maybe they live in an apartment where noise would be an issue. So, there are many reasons why people use hand tools. Now, for me, I use hand tools because it makes a lot of people think you know what you're doing. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's great for my business and my school. I mean, take a look. As you can see, I have an assortment of planes here, uh, varying in different sizes and also configurations. Now, I'm going to go over briefly what each one does, and you can decide which one works for you. Now, the, there's a numbering system here that I think originated by Stanley Tools. They make a number one plane all the way up to a number eight plane. And the number basically corresponds to the length of the plane and also the width of the blade. The biggest plane they make is a number eight, which I don't have one of those. I do have a little brother, number seven. This is also called a jointer plane. It's mainly used for flattening boards. It's about two inches shorter than the number eight, and the blade is about a quarter inch narrower. So the blade, this one me uh, measures like two and three eighths. And um, the length, it's about 22 inches. So the next size they make is a number six, which I don't have one of those. It is also called a four plane because of its design, it's used uh, before the other planes. Now, I'm not making this up. Because of its size, it's faster to flatten the board or get it close to flat before you go to the big boys like the number seven or the number eight to finish the job. So next we have the number five planes. I have three different configurations here. I have a standard angle, low angle, and the, and the five and a half. Now the five and a half, the blade is just a little bit wider. I'm gonna explain the difference between the low angle and the standard angle a little bit later. So these planes are also called jack planes. Like the jack of all trades, or well, these are like the jack of all planes. It does a little bit of everything. So the number five uh, planes, these measures around 15 inches. Okay, so next we have the number four planes. Same configurations, I have a standard angle, low angle, and a four and a half. Now these planes are also called smoothing planes. This is a plane you use to make the last pass on a piece of wood to get it nice and smooth. So these number four planes, well, I know it measures nine and a half inches because it just happens to be the same size as my, uh, you know, shoes. Now, they also make a number three, a number two, and also a number one. These are like novelty planes. They're a little bit small for the adult hands, but I still use my number two for small projects. These are great if you have like a son or a daughter who wants to get into woodworking. It would be perfect for them. Um, in fact, I think this is what I started off when I was a young boy. 
So, you know, I think I have a clip of it, of me, when I was young. What a cute kid, huh? Okay, so here I have a collection of small planes. So I have a couple of block planes. This is a low angle, uh, pretty much standard. This is a, one of my favorites for chair making. It just fits right in my palm and my fingers right here and I could just point and start shaping my chairs. I have uh, some, uh, what do you call shoulder planes. I have a three quarter inch. This is a Stanley 93. I have a Lee Nielsen. Uh, this is a five eighths. And also this is a half inch. I don't know if you consider these are planes, but these are my spoke shape, great for chair making. I have one that's round. This is made by Lee Nielsen. And this one's by Veritas. And I also have a router plane. Very useful. So the most asked question is, where do I start? With so many choices, what's the first hand plane I should get? Well, it's a toss up between a number four and then a number five. And it really depends on the type of work that you're planning to do. Now, if you're going to be making projects that's bigger than a bread box, then go with a number five. And anything smaller than that, then go with a number four. Now, me personally, I would go with a number five. If you're just getting into ham tools and this will be your first ham plane, I would recommend the number five low angle jack plane by Lee Valley, Veritas. Now, there's a couple of features in here that will help you get good results very quickly. The main reason why I prefer the Veritas over the other brands is because of this skew here. So this is a skew adjustment. This one here. See how it makes the blade goes back and forth skewing it like this? This is a great little option. Now the other brands doesn't have it. You're gonna have to use a, like a mallet to adjust. Now if you're used to it, it's not a big deal. Another good thing about this plane is that it has these little set screws right here on both sides here and here. What that does is kind of keep the, the blade in place. So when you do skew it, it's like a little pivoting point. To me, that's ingenious. And then also the cap, they added this big flange here. So it keeps the blade a little bit more stable. The other ones just have that little screw that just kind of holds the blade down. Now, when you buy this plane, what I recommend is getting all the, planes, all the blades that comes with it. You have a serrated blade that looks like this. This is actually used for like roughing out a board. This almost acts like a scrub plane. So when you're using the serrated blade, you want to actually go against the grain like this, cross grain like this. It takes out material a lot faster. So now you have a scrub plane. And then another blade that you want to get. Now it comes with a 25 degree standard. Another one is a, um, Right here, it's at 38 degrees. You can see that it's very steep. And also it comes with a 50 degree blade if you want. And you can see that the blade is almost very, very blunt. So when you're planning into a board that's really highly figured, like tiger maple or quilted maple, the grain's gonna go up and down, up and down. That's what gives you that those figures. So here you're going with the grain, but right about here you're going against the grain, and then you're going with the grain, and then against the grain, and then with the grain. So when you have a low angle, like a 25 degree, it's going to try and dig into here and then tear it out. So if you're working with highly figured wood, you want to go with a higher pitch, like a 50 degree. The angle is a little bit steeper, so it doesn't have a chance of digging into the, uh, the grain and start tearing it out. So the curlier the wood or the gnarlier the wood, the higher the pitch. So if you buy this plane and buy the three extra blades, now you have a scrub plane. This is the 25 degree, which is standard. It comes with the uh, plane. This will be your smoothing plane. And then this can be your scraper plane, different options. So now you almost have like four planes in one. So I'm gonna show you the difference between a standard angle and a low angle. So this is the standard angle. Let me just show you the parts. This is the cap. And then here we have the chip breaker. And this is the blade, or sometimes they call it the iron. We have the frog. We have the, the knob, the tote, or the handle. This is the body. 
This is the sole. There's not a whole lot uh, to this plane. The most important thing about the plane is really the blade. So the first thing I would do for my first adjustment, after I sharpen my blade, now I'm gonna do another video on my sharpening system and how I actually sharpen uh, plane blades and chisels or what have you. So the first adjustment I would make is I would make sure that my chip breaker is right up against the the tip of the blade. I like to uh, get it close. Now this is a number five, so I wanted to have some nice shaving. So I am going to put it about a 30 seconds of an inch away from the tip. I'm going to give you a close up of that. Tighten it down. So this is how it's supposed to look like. So the reason why I want the chip breaker to be really close to the blade is because the chip breaker, the function of a chip breaker is what it's called, to break the chip. So when you're cutting a shavings, the second it cuts, you want, like at this one, my wood, the second I cut, the chip breaker is right there to basically break the fibers of the wood, kind of like that. That's why I want the chip breaker to be as close as possible. The second it cuts, I want to start lifting it up. You know, wood is like a bunch of straws, the second you grab it and you break it, it loses its um, integrity and it's, you can plane a little bit easier. Now the next adjustment I want to make, I'm going to put this one back. The next adjustment is this opening of the mouth or the throat. It's right over here. Next thing I would do is I would advance the blade so that I can see it coming through. The second it comes through, I write about, whoop, there it is. I can see the blade sticking up. I can feel the blade. And I want to lower the blade back until it just barely disappears, like that. Now I want to adjust the opening of the mouth. Now there's three screws in the back here. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now the two outside screws is to loosen the frogs. So you just loosen the frog. Now the middle one here is to advance the frog up so you can close the mouth a little bit. So I'm going to adjust it. You can see it move closer, 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 right about there. And then I'm going to Tighten the two outside screws. And that will lock it down. Now with a less expensive plane like the Stanley's, the adjustment is a little bit different. You're gonna have to take the blade out. Now these two screws here hose the frog down. So you're going to have to loosen this up. And then make the adjustments here, in and out. And then you're going to have to kind of tighten it back down a little bit. Put the blade back. And then check the opening. Now, hopefully these are like 16-inch uh, threads, I mean 16 uh, threads per inch. So you can say, um, that's about, okay, I need to advance it a little bit more, so maybe I'll go half a turn and then see where you get, and just kind of play with it a little bit. So that's the difference between a good quality plane and a, a fairly good plane. The reason why I want the throat to be really uh, small, like a 30 seconds of an inch, is because when you're cutting, you have to imagine how the shaving is coming through. So if you're cutting and then the chip breaker lifts it up, what's happening here is that all these fibers want to hang on to each other. So now it's gonna be pulling it up like this because you're, the chip breaker is pulling it up. So the fiber wants to come up, but it's pulling the other fibers underneath it to also wants to come up. So now if the throat is way back here, so the all the fiber is now lifted way up. 
So now the blade doesn't have a chance to cut it. So if the blade, if the mouth is closer like this, it's keeping the fibers down, then this way the blade has a chance to cut it before it actually lifts up. So that's why I want the throat to be as close as possible. So if you want to go out to the flea market and buy a, a plane for like say $20 or $30, the first thing I would look for is make sure there's no cracks on the, on the body or the sole. And next thing is you want to make sure that this area here is not too worn out. Because if this is worn out, you're going to have a hard time flattening it back out again. Now you could send it out and have somebody uh, surface grind it and, and flatten it out for you. Because if this is worn out, basically what's happening here is that the mouth is actually open like this because it's not flat and holding the, the fibers down. So when you're cutting again, if the mouth is way open, the fiber wants to lift up. And so now you're cutting, instead of a thousandth of an inch, you're probably cutting two thousand, three thousand, depends on how far the fiber is actually lifting up. So that's why I like to have the throat as close as possible so it has nowhere to go. The blade has a chance to come in and cut it off before it actually lifts up, just like this. So I'm going to show you the difference between low angle and the standard angle. So the low angle, this is the cap. I'm going to show you that the frog, it's the only thing that's really different. The frog is actually cast into the body. It's set at 12 degrees. Now a lot of people get confused is the low angle plane, is the bevel up or is it bevel down? Well, this is um, grinded at uh, 25 degrees for a smoothing plane. So if it's sitting at 25 degrees and the frog is at 12 degrees, when you're actually resting on the frog, the blade is actually sticking up. So for low angle planes, it has to be bevel up. Where the standard angle is actually bevel down and then the chip breaker is on top. Now, because this blade is bevel up, the bevel actually acts as the chip breaker, so it doesn't need one. So the blade is actually thick to compensate for the chip breaker like the other one. So you can see the difference. Right about now, you're probably saying, wow, William, your close-ups of your demonstration is so timely. I'm gonna hit that like button, and I'm gonna subscribe to your channel. So I adjust it the same way. I put my blade back in my plane. I'm going to put my chip breaker on. And the first thing I do is I'm going to advance the blade until it pops up from the sole. Right there, I can see it sticking up. It's a little high on that side, but I'll make that adjustment later. Then I'm going to lower the blade so it just disappears like this. And now I want to adjust the opening of the mouth. And the way you do that is because the frog can't move, the mouth has to move. So you lower, you loosen this up, and this uh, little screw here adjusts the opening. So you can see that I can open up the mouth, and I can also close the mouth right about here. Then I'm going to lock it in. Okay, so now the next adjustment is I want to make sure that I'm cutting evenly. Because if I cut heavy on one side, a couple of passes on a board that's square, well, it's going to be out of square pretty quickly. So the way I do it is a little bit different than what I see other people do, is I try to find a piece of lumber that's almost at the width of the mouth because I want the shaving to come out evenly on both sides. So let's go see if we can find some lumber. So I was scrummaging through my shop and I found a really nice piece of ebony. I also found a really nice piece of hard maple. Now I have to be real careful about which piece of wood I'm going to be using here because if I choose the, um, this white wood here, well, people are going to think I'm a racist. And if I go with the black wood, well, I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of emails accusing me of the same thing. Labeling somebody a racist seems like the hot thing right now. So I'm going to go with something safe. I'm going to be using Alaskan yellow cedar. So the next step, before I cut anything, I want to back the blade out so that I don't cut anything. So I'm just cutting nothing but air. So do you know what you call this when you cut nothing but air? It's an airplane. Okay, I'm sorry. 
that have to be painful. So when I'm moving the plane forward, I want to advance the blade at the same time. So I want to see where it starts, whoop, right about here, it's cutting a little bit on the, my right hand side. Now I see the shaving coming out on my right hand side, I'm going to push this to the right, like so. I go a little further. Uh, it's coming out a little bit on this side too. Let me see. Yeah, somewhat even. Maybe push a little bit more on that side. Whoops, maybe too much. Oh, that's not bad, right there. Oh, that's coming out pretty even. Now look what happens if I skew it to one side. If the shaving comes through this way, that means this side is heavier. The heavier side always pushes to the side that's weaker. And that's, if I see my shavings turning this way, that means this side is heavier than this side. So let me just finish this and then we'll start again. Now once I get the board flat, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back it off and get a thinner shaving. Looks like it's a little bit heavier, now it's curling this way. It's a little bit heavier on, on my right side, so I'm just gonna, you just have to really, really be sensitive. Maybe try that. I think I got it. See how it's coming? Nothing, I think I got it. See how it's coming straight out? Like I said, if the shaving is going to my right, that means the left side is heavier. And if it's going this way, the right side is heavier. I want to mention one last thing. If you're thinking about purchasing your first hand plane, do yourself a favor and get a good quality plane like the Lee Nielsen's or the Lee Valley's Veritas, because it's really important that you experience what a good plane feels like from the get-go. Now, it's not easy to refurbish a less quality plane and make it work. It takes a little bit of experience and you're going to have to put some English into your planning. And if your first experience is a bad one, getting tear outs and it just won't cut the way you want, you're going to say to yourself, why would anybody want to use this crap and just set it aside? Now if you do that, you're really missing out because hand tools will separate you from the boys. Hand tools will make your work look cleaner, crispier. It will have soul because soul comes from within translates into your hands and into your work. Now you can contact Lee Nielsen, Lee Valley, and I'm sure they will send you a, a catalog or a brochure uh, like this. Now Lee Valley makes more than just hand planes. They make a lot of great, clever tools. So now be careful. Don't let your spouse see this because some people call this wood porn. And I can, I can see why, because every time I flip through these pages, I just feel so dirty. So until next time, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.